do it. And uh, so we're going to talk about all the results and all the news that we can we can get our little hands on. So what what did you think about some of the big six stuff? Do you pay attention to any of the desert series racing that goes on, Mister Huberty? Um, you know, not too much. I, I pay attention to some like the Hare and Hound, and you know, some of the works results when they come up. But, um, you know, my main passion is enduros and hair scrambles, and uh, I kind of seem to be attracted to like the GNCC and the the NEPG series. Um, but you know, I certainly know that Kirk Caselli, you know, has been trying to dominate out west this year with Hare and Hound, but Kendall Norman, on the other hand, is you know taking the first two wins of the series. Hell yeah, he has. I, 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 it, it, I'm glad to hear you say that because, one, you said the words Kurt Caselli because I think <laughs> anybody in off-road. Dominator. Yeah, anybody in off-road should be a, be a fan of that man for sure. Um, and then, of course, uh, you're talking about Kendall Norman, who last year pretty much didn't really – I don't really know if he didn't have a ride, didn't want to accept a ride, but he just kind of did his own thing last year. Maybe he needed a break. Everybody needs a break every now and again. So, But the Big Six is obviously a little bit of a different series, a little bit more local, not as big as uh, the, the Hare and Hound is, um, more local to Southern California. Um, some names, Evan Kelly actually got first place this past weekend, and uh, Nick Stover, and then Andrew – Delgado Jr. The only thing I know about Delgado, not person-wise, but the name, is that it's a community college in New Orleans. <laughs> no, hmm. there's more to it than that. So, is there? Is <laughs> yeah. do you do you know more about this? Is this an age thing? Am I am no, I missing no, no, something no. here, Larry? No, not at all. No, but okay, that's more fine. Than, it's not a community college. <laughs> <laughs> you mean the community college was probably named after something else? Could be. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Man, I, I hate knowledge. It just gets me every time, I'm telling you. It's, it's just worthless. So, where did that come from? <laughs> it really is, though. It really is. It's just the weird part. I mean, I told you, I did grow up in Louisiana. It, it's it's awkward. But, uh, so Zach, if you yep. were able to head out west and do um, a desert race, what bike do you think you would ride? Ooh. You know, I mean, you could start really, with KTM because we know that that's the truth. I mean, I, I really like the, the 200 engine, but, you know, in open races, there's not enough motor to to pull you, you know, at those kind of speeds. So um, I would probably have to go with like the, the 450 XCF. I think that's a, a great base model that KTM has made. And, you know, it's been been proven in multiple areas have you run the new 500 yet i have tried that that is definitely a tractor of a motorcycle (laughs) (laughs) yeah i bet dude i bet i've actually i've I've never ridden the 500 i've ridden the 450 a couple times i've ridden a 505 i know the engines have changed a little bit probably the transmissions as well i don't know 500 super 13 and it's okay it is a tractor man where'd you ride that at at the uh, KTM demo days. Oh, where was that at uh, Brian Story's place? Where was that? The... I should have did it Oak Hill. Oak Hill? A motocross, man. Motocross. Yeah, but it didn't matter. What are you doing at a motocross? A tractor, dude. He's Look at you. He was like, I, I, <laughs> yeah, I, I would jump those jumps if I knew how. Dude, don't feel bad. We'd be out there looking at them together being like, I don't know what you're supposed to do on those. Uh, no. We're off-road riders. <laughs> we don't know what the hell's going on. Rail. Yeah, exactly. It's like That's why you put the flags when you make the off-road course that go through right. the jumps and not over the jumps, right? <laughs> it was awesome. Yep. <laughs> I think tractored in the corners. It was absolutely amazing. Yeah, I don't. Uh, I don't know what I would ride out west. I don't. I don't think I'd ride a two stroke. And if I did, it would be a three hundred, just hands down. Like, or probably the XCW, just so you could just freaking move. But I don't know. Four stroke. Chris with Kirk Caselli rides. That's what I'm gonna ride. Right? <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm talking about. All right. Before we uh, talk about a little bit of the uh, national enduro news, because of the fact that Mr. Zach Huberty was there this past weekend, uh, the LACC, so another kind of local race uh, for us, started up this past weekend. Um, in round one, they had their Spring Creek MX. So Forrest Smith, who was actually their uh, their winner for 2012, took the win this past weekend. Michael Williams in second, and Jason Harvey in third. Um, those are all fairly big names on i guess you would say on the southern kind of sarah the sarah circuit for enduros and hair scrambles and kind of the southern united states it's uh, unfortunate that they don't get a chance to travel too much yeah yeah to see how they would do yeah because you'd think going to national they would be actually in there exactly no and i would love to see them i know we'll definitely see them at the acadiana national which is going to be in april zach are you gonna be making it down for that uh unfortunately not it's just uh too far with college 
It is. A, it's a heck of a drive, dude. Which, what I could offer to you is you could ditch the off-road Viking team, and you could fly down here, and I would drive you in my seat time rig. <laughs> uh, I'm, I totally, about that. I'm totally. I'm <laughs> totally killing. You don't have to ditch off-road Viking. How's you that? can stay with That's us. Class A ride. Come on. Yeah. Seriously, <laughs> I'm a double A rider in Texas. In Texas. <laughs> yeah. It's, no, no, he says Texas. That's Texas, Louisiana, Arkansas, Oklahoma, New Mexico. He, yeah. He, it's a circumference here. So what that really means yeah. is I'm not top 10 anywhere. That's what he's talking about. You know, it's it's quite unfortunate. So <laughs> I try to ride really fast and still get my ass kicked. It's horrible. But hey, it happens. You look good in the in the GoPro videos I saw of you. Oh, did you? Especially when I hit that guy and fell over. Did you like that too in <laughs> section one? <laughs> I didn't see that part, but I saw... Maybe I should have kept my mouth shut then. I don't know. I saw some of the, the wide open sections that you were riding. I mean, it looked like a blast to me. Oh, dude. No, uh, I think you're t- probably... <laughs> no, no. No, 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 not cool. No, he's talking about me at the uh, at Cycle Land. So shut your face, James, because oh, okay. I did beat you there. No, you I know <laughs> I didn't. I was gonna say that I did, but I, I didn't. Notches is awesome. It's a beautiful, fun, fast track. Yeah, dude, that's definitely one that you should come down for if you're gonna come to Texas. Because I have a guest room, so if you want to come down and try to get fast, I know Cole Kirkpatrick. I mean, I'm not telling you I could actually get you to meet him, but <laughs> he's around here, so you could definitely hang out with him if you wanted to try. I'll try. <laughs> All right, cool. Okay, so now we're talking about some Texas stuff. We'll bring it into some of the results that happened with the TCCRA um, started up. I mean, so we had Cecil Parker on. If some of you guys don't remember that, you probably had as much to drink as he did. Uh, <laughs> so it, I, he was in a good place. Yes, you know, he that's, was. That's allowed. That's allowed. I, I, he's an adult. He can do whatever the hell he wants. Middle of the week, not race weekend. Yeah, <laughs> especially on seat time. This is kind of how it goes. So uh, Caleb Ramsey got first place, uh, and then we had Austin Henderson in second and Cody Beck in third. Now, because I know these guys, it, it's kind of hard to not just completely talk about them that much. Caleb Ramsey, obviously a very, very talented rider, had uh, quite a number of championships, actually, between TCCRA, Toro, and others. Great kid. We raced 125 expert together for for years. Yeah, I mean, you're 30, 30 years his senior. Uh, Probably. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, probably. But <laughs> That's okay. Age is nothing. Yeah, I'm not going to make fun of you because you could probably still beat me. No, 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 no. Uh, so Austin Henderson in second. And I, I actually ex- really happy to see Austin Henderson up there because Austin Henderson just came off a really bad leg injury. I know that he had to have some surgery, all kinds of stuff. He was racing in Toro in the heavy A class yep. uh, to kind of like get his – feet wet and then come out the pro gets second and cody beck in third cody beck's been doing really really good coming back into the pro classes after he went in uh you know did a bunch of traveling in europe and school over there for yeah. becoming smart and hopefully be able to buy his stuff give him his kudos oh uh-huh. kudos oh koodles <laughs> i i was i was thinking you said scoodles no i kudos. thought you said skittles <laughs> <laughs> okay give him skittles yeah <laughs> Cody Beck, you get some Skittles, third place. <laughs> You're the best guy ever. No. Well, uh, so I'm, I'm really – I heard that the race was extremely freaking dusty. James, would you like to give us a a, a recap? It, it was really dusty, but uh, there was quite a few muddy creek crossings. And yeah. We, we all looked like we were riding the muddiest track ever, but you just get wet and the dust stuff stuff to you, so it, it, it ended up – being pretty bad on goggles, but it was a hard packed, dusty mess. Oh man! Well, looked like, looked like good jumps. Yeah, they they had about ten ski jumps, just like fifth gear wide open. That's the way they had them last year too. They kind of like some of them were creek jumps, yeah, like, and like, some of them were. I, you know, what's crazy? I hit all of those last year. Oh, I got, I got to tell you, uh, <laughs> I thought I was going fast. <laughs> <laughs> I was not. Was that what you? I'm going back to the truck. Screw you guys. This is too much for me. I can't handle this. <laughs> it was over your head, right? Yeah. Uh, well, I see the bottom of tires. I was like, yeah, you're, you're, you can have it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, my gosh. So that's some of the news and some of the results that we were just going to talk about. I think there's some, uh, you know, some off-season stuff that happened with some GNCC riders that we're going to talk about when we kind of get a little bit more into the GNCC stuff. Um, but so we had the National Enduro this past weekend, Zach. I want to know a little bit more about that. If you could give us kind of your 
you know, your take on it, man. I know you've you've written some stuff for the Off Road Viking and then Trail Rider magazines. Uh, we're putting some stuff up that you posted, but you know, give us the lowdown, dude. Tell us about the race, your experience, if you will. I mean, this is the first year I've really traveled south for any of the national enduros. Um, about three weeks ago, I went to the Cherokee National, which was, you know, a totally different experience. And right. then went to the Sane Lapper, where it was supposedly supposed to be 55 degrees, but ended up being about 32 the morning of. Yeah, I did see a lot of jackets <laughs> in everybody's pictures, so it did look uh, quite cold. Extremely cold. Um, but... You know, the race was probably one of the most spectator-friendly and pit crew-friendly of, of any Endora I've ever been to. I mean, racers and all the fans and stuff could be at the beginning of every check, at the end of every check, and then they were allowed to, allowed to see us during the check, um, you know, which helps the sport in a way. Um but oh, yeah. No, the- I think you're absolutely correct. The fact that you can not only like for some of the national guys, you know, they really do make a lot of adjustments to their bikes throughout the day so that the mechanics can get there and get to them. And that, and then guys like you and me, you know, maybe if we have a, a friend or family that came with us, you know, they could just get us that extra bottle of water or sometimes that extra goo or, you know, things like that. It really does make a big difference. And then, of course, when you get badass pictures, well, it's really hard to <laughs> He's like he said. It's really hard to spectate an yeah. enduro race. So when you I can mean, get that kind of stuff, right. it's that's awesome, awesome that they did such a great job yeah. laying it out. Yeah, I mean, because here in in Pennsylvania and stuff, some of the enduros that we go to, you know, as far as in New Jersey, I mean, family members can't even go out in the course or aren't supposed to, right? <laughs> um, except whether you're maybe a, a photographer, or videographer, or um, someone that's working the event. You know, which makes makes it hard to get support for the sport when, you know, the people that want to help you out and support you, you know, can't even go out and see you. Yeah. Um, but, you know, in, in regards to the race, it was six sections, uh, seven to 13 miles in length. And, I mean, it mainly, it was pretty fast for an Enduro, uh, really sandy tons of you know big roots that you had to you know go over um but i really think it favored the gncc style ride riders for this event you know like thad duval did well and charlie mellons uh you kind of just hammering down on these huge straightaways not being scared to you know hold it wide <laughs> yeah and and do you think that do you say that is in it was maybe more terrain wise or do you think maybe that it didn't feel as tight as say as some of the, the, the East Coast and Enduros can get? Uh, I mean, I would say for an Enduro, it was a fairly um, more open course. Okay. But there were definitely some technical tight sections where, you know, if you're not a, you know, a tight woods trail rider, I guess, you know, you had a difficult time. Right. Huh. Um, That's interesting. The East <laughs> what? It was the, East Coast the East Coast Wiggle. Yeah. <laughs> or you got to get between them dare, d- d- dim dare trees. Oh, yeah. And, I mean, some of them you're hitting in third gear and you're just praying that uh, you get between both trees perfectly. Or if you do hit them, that's not going to knock you off the bike. <laughs> yeah. No, we've all, yeah, we've all been there, especially at Nacogdoches. They've got some of those sections that are just absolutely well, ridiculous. Well, Brian, you're from Louisiana. I mean, That's I've, true, I've yeah. I've some Louisiana endurance. Oh, yeah, in Louisiana, and dude, you ride, tight. you I mean, cut your like, shit down to like 30 inches and then put bark busters on, and right. you're like, all right, and, it's and you like, still hit it's trees. It's like bars, bar, um, you know, hips, Banging. and then go. Bang them. And do it again, <laughs> yeah. and then do it again. That's the Louisiana wiggle. You have to learn it on Bourbon Street, but then you take it to the woods. It works. Right. It mean, works. We had... We have some of those here in New Jersey where, I mean, I kid you not, some of the, the trails you legit have to get off the bike, kind of like move your bike through and then get back on um, just to get through the, the the two tight trees that you're trying to get through. Yeah, see, I dig stuff like that. I think it's super technical. And I know that – I, I understand where people are coming from because I don't like it when it gets, you know, 80 miles an hour, super open, crazy-ass fast. Uh, I like it when it gets a little bit more slower and technical, you know. So I can see why some people wouldn't like that, but uh, it just pisses me off. I'm, I, I'm, a, I might be masochistic. I don't know. Whatever. I just ride on the back wheel with my handlebar turned. <laughs> Whatever, Scott Summers. Oh, now all of a sudden you're Scott oh. Summers. Can you pick up an XR six hundred? No. <laughs> Did you hear that, Zach? No. Nah. He's like, oh yeah, I just get on the back wheel and turn my handlebars, and I'm like, fuck <laughs> you. Yeah, right. That's not what happens at all. <laughs> So uh, you got fifth place in your class, is that correct? This yeah, past weekend, um, 
I mean, I got smoked by, I think, one of the kids that won the class. His name is uh, Karsten Cagle, I believe his name yeah, is. Yeah, Karsten Cagle. Yeah, yeah. He's a, he's, a, he's a Sarah dude, isn't he? Oh, I mean, he was on a YZ125 back on row 101 and completely crushed the class. I, I was amazed at, uh, like, the section times that he had. Huh. Yeah, no, I, I'm pretty sure that Karsten Cagle is actually a dude out of Sarah. Um, and he's he's done well at some of the national enduros. I don't believe this is his first one. Um, yeah, so I think he did well at the. Don't feel Louisiana. bad about that. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I was also pretty under the weather. I've been sick since uh, the Georgia National, um, but you know, no excuses there. It, right. Yeah. It's all it's all on my part. The riding. <laughs> hey man, well that's cool. I'm glad you. So overall though, you had fun. I mean, yes. Oh yeah, I mean it was a blast. Good. I, I enjoy getting out of you know. The, the normal riding that we have here and just experiencing, you know, a whole new series. And um, I'll definitely be back next year. Wicked. Well, I know. I'm, I'm liking to hear that. Um, I, I, we did actually uh, kind of ask around to see if we could figure out any questions. And I figured now's a good time to talk about it since we were um, on the subject of the National Enduro Series. Um, we did. We got in touch with uh, Tanner Thompson. Uh, he emailed us a question um, kind of asking us what we thought um i know that zach's got it printed up and he's gonna go ahead and read it to us yep. just because he's he's the one with the literary voice he's the one who really sounds professional when he talks we're gonna let him read it we'll <laughs> figure it out and we'll talk about and see what we think and our opinions might be on what he has to say all right so this is a question from tanner thomas he's actually an a250 rider from the national dory series he's out of uh new hampshire and rides for motorbikes plus ktm um but his question was with the absence of Shane Hufford Jr. and Thad Duvall's bike problems at this past Sunday's San, San Lapper National Enduro, there's a roughly five-minute gap between ninth-place overall finisher Kyle McDonald and eighth-place overall finisher Brad Backen. If you go forward in positions from Brad, the times are relatively close to each other, and it's the same case if you go backwards in positions from Kyle. I'm curious about what you guys, as well as the viewers, think it will take for the new influx of pro and looking to become, become pro riders to start bridging this large time gap and be competitive with the top guys all right so essentially i think he's kind of saying you know there's x amount of guys through place one through nine or one through eight and then there's the guys behind them and there's just a huge gap in time right. um there and yep. it, i mean you could there's there's a lot of different possibilities you could uh, for me the first thing i thought of was the past couple of years where everybody goes well there's these top five guys in supercross and they're gonna, we're going to see who of them wins. But then, you know, that's what they thought as well going into this season, the 2003 yeah. Supercross, and look at Davey Millsap. Right. You know? Exactly. Um, so and you see it in all kinds of series. Right. The, and the I, top I, ten are yeah. going to be here, and from there back. Yeah. And I think, I think too, the, the National Enduro Series is still growing. I think that at this point in time, there are still these kind of these top ten guys or these top, you know, these top dudes – they're they're the GNCC guys. They're the top five in the GNCC. They're the top five in like the OMAs if they go to the OMAs. I mean, these guys are fast, not just in Enduros. These guys are fast everywhere. And some of these yep. guys that are competing, like Tanner Thomas, I know he does do the hair scrambles in the Northeast, and he does do you know a lot of the. Uh, he's been doing more and more. I think he won the the two hundred A class last year yep. in the National yep. Enduro Series. I mean, that's that's amazing that he was able to do that. But if that's his first win in the A class and he's in the the A the two fifty A class now, I, I think he's probably still got some learning to do in retrospect to trying to then compete at the top ten level. Yep. Though, wasn't he not like thirteenth overall or like eleventh overall this past weekend? Well he he did have a tenth overall last year at I think Rattlesnake National Enduro, which See, is I mean that's is fairly rocky that's compared solid. to I mean that's solid compared to, for it's yeah. Um, yeah, but I, mean, I really. Th yeah, go ahead. I, yeah, what do you think, man? I want to know what you think. I mean, I really think it comes down to two things. One, the whole fitness side, um, and it really depends on how much time these racers are putting into, you know, the different training, the training areas. Right. Um, as far as you know, whether they're cycling, working out, swimming, you know, all those different, you know, various, um, you know, ways to get the cardio up. So. I mean, if you look at the, the top guys in front of them, they're all in probably some of the best shape they've ever been. Um, and then the other side is just the support, whether it's technical support, suspension, 
you know, engine. Um, if you look at all those guys below, they're pretty much doing it on their own. They're kind of getting some support through local shop, but they're really relying on their, their dad or a good friend to take care of all the bike work versus the people in the top eight overall. They either got a, a mechanic or factory, you know, technical support, you know, helping them along. Yeah. It, 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 I think th- absolutely valid points. I think when it comes down to training, um, you know, these guys, some of these guys too have been doing this, you know, look at the ax man, Paul Wibley. Now, obviously he's not the national enduros right now, but that dude, he goes anywhere and he's, he's like kicking ass and taking names, you know? I mean, so, you know, but he's been doing this for a really long time. And I think when you really go look at Charlie Mullins, you know, somebody that's been just dominating the national enduro wow. series this past year, 2010, absolutely kicked ass, uh, you know, it was unfortunately hurt, but in 2011, he won the uh, the XC1 class for GNCCs. Guys like that, I mean, they have been doing this for so long. And I think like a guy like Tanner Thomas, it sounds like he's really started to come and do his own speed in the past three years. I think when he's been competing in the National Enduros, I think he needs to keep with it. It sounds like he has not hit a plateau uh, nope. and that he needs to stay. He just needs to stay healthy and stay consistent because it's obvious, you know, you watch guys, they get injured. You know, and that takes six months, eight months off, and you just ride in period, and then you've got to rehab, then you got to come back. So you're not gaining any speed; you're just trying to find that speed again. Um, no, I think his future. Yeah, he's definitely future. Yeah, I know. I, I, I would, I would love to see him come to Texas and see if he could get on Coles Row and see what would happen. What do you think, James? You think I he mean have- he will be at Texas, Ooh, buddy? <laughs> but he'll have his own, um, his own row because he placed. I believe he's. 10th or 11th overall right now in points. Right. Okay. Now I have a question about the the way that they've changed up the points in the row system. Now is yep. when when they change your row, is that per the last race or per your current point position? I believe for the first for like the this past weekend's race, it was just for like the, the first race's position like how you did mm-hmm. but i believe from now on that they're doing it based on the points overall okay. that you've accumulated okay that That's makes complete sense it. and yeah i just i just honestly we've had some people ask those questions and i was like i want to every time i reread their press release i just honestly felt more confused so uh just <laughs> maybe bad wording on their part maybe bad you know english on mine uh you know whatever so we'll figure it out i, so, I mean I've been meaning to go back and, you know, look over that press release. Um, I was just thinking about today, you know, uh, you know, where will, where will Mike Lafferty, you know, what row will he be on next week or the next Enduro? Yeah. Um, just trying to see how they calculate it because some of those guys that were, you know, had pro rows before last year. Now they may not have a pro row coming up. They may be, you know, further back on row 45. Right. Yeah, and that would uh, it, it's interesting. I you know, but Charlie Mullins, I mean, he was what thirty one? Yeah. You know, uh the, at the first at one. The first one. And kicked ass. Now he's on twenty one and he kicked ass. I mean, I think you just gotta turn the throttle and ride harder, right? I mean that's what I would do. But but I think <laughs> the first Endora actually favored the later row and last weekend's Endoro favored kinda the guys up front. Little oh from, really? From okay. My, from my opinion. Yeah, and what uh what row were you riding on, Zach? Uh, I was on 45. 45? And do you typically ride that far back, or is that un- unnormal uh, for you? I just try to stay out of the, the pros way, so that's why I picked 45. I figured that'd be, you know, with the last pro riders. Yeah. See, I'm just the opposite. For whatever masochistic reason, I like doing, like, 15 to 18. So that way, in the really, really long test sections, at least one, two, and three will come blowing by me, and I get yeah. to, like, stay on their ass for, like, at least five seconds and just, yeah. like, be completely enamored <laughs> and really enjoy. Yeah, one 200. We were yeah. running 9 through 21. I mean, that's where yeah. I stayed, 9 through 21. See? It was part of it. You get to, you get to watch that kind of stuff, yeah. and I like that. But... Someone comes by, you try to tag in and train with Yeah, them. absolutely, for at least three turns. Yep. That's a good goal, I think. <laughs> three <laughs> turns, I can do this. At least, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, so, mean, I enjoy doing that um, in the local series, you know, especially where some of the speed is similar or maybe, you know, a little faster and just seeing, you know, how much further can I keep within this section? Right. And then try to do that throughout the whole race. And I mean, you end up doing a lot better than you would without them behind you. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think you're absolutely right. I mean, it That's looks test yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. Okay. So. 
Charlie Mullins, first place. He's got the points, obviously, because of the fact he's got two firsts so far. That was uh, San Lapper Enduro was round two, the National Enduro Series. We've got Mike Lafferty in second, which he was on his new Husqvarna FE 350, opposed to his... Uh, Husaberg. His, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Way to go, Brian. Husqvarna, you idiot. Uh, but so him on, his, <laughs> him, on his, him on his blue KTM with his FE 350 uh, is uh, pretty impressive. So... And then, of course, Thad Duvall on his 450 Honda. Was it his 450 or 250? It's a CRF 250. So he was on his 250. Look at that shit. Good it's a good thing him. I asked. Yeah, good for him, man. Uh, he went to it because I think he thought it would be a little better in the in the technical woods. And I think he also mentioned that he, he was able to ride a lot more aggressive with it versus kind of trying to tame the 450 and, you know, hmm. all these tight wood sections. Right. That makes sense. I mean, it sounds like a lot of the reasons that Mullins went to the 350 this year as well. Yeah, so, exactly. Look at these guys changing it up and being awesome. Maybe I should ride a four-stroke. That's probably <laughs> not going to change much, is it? Nah. It's, it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate. Okay. Well, uh, I know that we have going to we, – we've kind of, like, gone through some of the results. We're going to see about talking about some of the GNCC stuff that's coming up. We've got a another little – a uh, friend of ours that's going to come jump in, but we're going to try to call in really quick uh, Jeremy Saylor, who is going to be the producer of the GNCC for 2013's we- uh, the GNCC webcast. Uh, he's going to kind of give us a little bit of a rundown on what's going on. Now, uh, I know that you guys can't see me that much. We're, like I said, we're figuring all this stuff out. We're trying to make stuff happen. But one of the people that I definitely want to say thank you to is Fly Racing. So flyracing.com is where you can go check them out. They are the title sponsor of Seat Time. They have been phenomenal supporters of this show and everything that we do and we love having them as a partner um they are there a lot of people see them nowadays in motocross and supercross but i don't think that a lot of people really realize how huge they are in the off-road industry you know i mean it's like you guys sponsor more off-road series i think than any other you know gear manufacturer out there and you guys don't so yeah off-road is our thing right now yeah. we are pushing very very hard on off-road yeah so i mean if you if you want to if you want to help support people that are supporting our industry opposed to maybe going oh my gosh that's the coolest shit ever or what i mean you want to support fly racing I mean, you want to go to flyracing.com maybe go to your local dealer check out all their stuff i mean obviously andrew short and trey canard look fantastic no no no, no. but that, that's super cross no but I'm that's what i'm saying but truly, <laughs> truly, yeah truly off-road but, but that's if what you want to get guys, guys like ride, me and zach yeah. Look yeah. fantastic and fly, right? I mean, we look good anyway, but right now we look good and fly racing. So I don't know about that, but yeah, I mean, I have pants on right now, so you guys can't really tell just how absolutely beautiful I am. But my shoes are small, right, James? Zach, are you getting a picture of this? It, it, I think uh, he's probably getting a picture of. I think uh, his pants are off. He's getting a picture of uh, Stephen's head, unfortunately, <laughs> and his shoes. Oh. The, the Goonies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Hey, you guys. <laughs> I don't know if that was a cut at us or a cut at Steven or yes. It could be a little bit of both. So, all right, Larry, tell us a little bit more about fly racing. You're here. Um, give us some Give us some highlights. Give us some awesome stuff. What actually, you check we, out? Put, we put more money into off-road racing across the nation than any other company, which you just said. Right. I mean, that's awesome. If uh, I mean, if, if you're not wearing if 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 you if you want to get paid for racing right now, wear a fly because I mean we're paying contingency is huge, it's huge. That's so, what I'm talking about. Everybody likes getting paid. Yeah, exactly. So I mean, that's pretty much what I can say is we have we put the money behind off road even way more than motocross, Trey or Andrew, right, or anyone. We we put the money behind off road right now. And that, nice. that's where we're going. That's that's the field we're we're trying to target. So hell yeah, yeah. Well, Zach, uh, Zach, you know, yeah, you see it. Did you see the new uh, spring 2013 gear yet, Zach? I I haven't had a chance for some reason. The release of that, you know, snuck by me. Um, I've been stuck on the the 2013 gear that they released, you know, over the winter and. I mean, I love that sonar gear, the the red, yellow, and and black set. I'm I've been meaning to get a set. Um, just working on it right now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, Zach, you've got to look at the spring release. It, it, is, it looks it is sick. Fantastic. That kinetic mesh stuff, the yes. uh, with all the lightning bolts and everything. Yeah. I was oh. like, oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> the it's... new ads that uh that they've made over there are so sweet. You know, with all the the lightning bolts, like you said, and 
Um, I even I think their new uh, background ad for their Facebook page is just this is probably one of the the best ads I've seen in off road. Yep, it's I mean like I said we're we're trying to stay cutting edge. There's no doubt about it. We're I mean we wouldn't we want to keep up with the Jones. Hell yeah, and blow them away. On top of that, mm. and and we're put we're give, like I said we're giving y'all the option to get paid to race. I mean, I think that's like a bad idea at all right now. So, I like I pay myself to race. <laughs> okay, so, <laughs> so, so, so Brian, I mean, <laughs> there's a lot of people that take me serious in life. You shouldn't be one of them. So stop right now and listen to everything that I have to say. All right. Well, uh, I know Steve is still trying to figure this stuff out. We, we're kind of throwing this on him right now in the mix. So, Larry, I know that we talked a little bit about uh, seeing how we could shoot from the hip on this. So, we're, if we could swing it out and bring in Mr. Garrett. Yep. I agree. And we'll talk with Garrett Great for a guy. little bit. And y'all need to hear this guy. And then that way we could talk with the, uh, with Jeremy as well about the GNCC stuff that's coming up. And Garrett is actually uh, – he's with Motul USA. And he actually has uh, – he, he helps sponsor, through Motul, helps sponsor one of the larger quad teams um, that's going to be competing in the GNCC series this year. So I think it will be good to to learn a lot more about them. So good. we'll swap that out, and we'll see how this is going to happen. I don't know. You All just right. turn that thing off, take off the headphones, and he can come sit down in this nice, really warm spot for you. What do you think? I'm all in. All right. I'll talk a little bit about what I did this past weekend because of the fact that it's absolutely – Hilarious. Yeah, I unfortunately did absolutely no racing, so it was probably pretty boring for the guys that want to just know about all the racing that went on. So instead of go to the TCCRA or any of that kind of stuff, I hung out with the family. It's been a lot, lot of stuff going on, unfortunately. So with that kind of stuff, with that kind of stuff, you know, we just like freaking just take some time with the family. I think everybody's got to do that every now and again. It's not, you know, not the worst idea. Uh, had a lot of fun. Made it to a family birthday party on Saturday. We did... uh I went out Saturday night, hung out with some friends. Uh, went out with some friends uh, on Saturday night. I might have had a few adult beverages, so I'll tell. I'm gonna go ahead and tell Garrett right now. Garrett, you probably better hear me, not through there, but that's mainly so you can hear Zach. I see. So can you hear me? I can hear you just fine, actually. Yes. All right. Yes, All right. You. So that's okay. So tell me, <laughs> what about your weekend? Uh, this past weekend we did, uh, the Grand Am race, uh, yeah. here in uh, Austin, Texas at the new, uh, Coda facility, the circuit of Americas. Oh my gosh. Is that the, that's the formula one place. Yeah, correct. So, so you were down there. Yeah. They built it specifically what? for that. Uh, it's an amazing facility. They, d- they've done a great job. Uh, can't wait to see MotoGP and some two yeah. wheels there, uh, here coming awesome. up in a couple weeks. So, um, one of our teams actually won one of the, actually two of the, the, the different um, uh, disciplines that they have. So nice, quite exciting. And uh, now I'm happy here with you guys uh, hanging out, hanging out. Yeah, <laughs> we uh, we got in touch with Larry. But like I said, we had some uh, we were going to have some some different guys on some local guys and some other guys uh, sign in on the Internet. Uh, but unfortunately, just the way it went down, a lot of stuff come up in other people's lives so they couldn't make it. So we got in touch with Larry. Larry would come by. He's like, oh, I've got our buddy from Motul USA in town. Is it okay if he comes by? I was like, absolutely. Let's have him over. Let's talk and let's let's, let's go through some of this stuff. So, you're involved with Motul USA, a lot of the marketing stuff that uh, that goes on, and you guys are major sponsors of uh, one of the ATV teams that compete in the GNCC series. So, can you tell me a little bit more about you know that how, your, y'all's involvement with that team, and you know, kind of what you guys are looking forward to for 2013 in the GNCC series? Sure, sure. So we have a uh, a great relationship with uh, Can Am. Let's say okay. Uh, we started off with them in the work series on the West Coast, and um, we were uh, reached out by Jimmy O'Dell, which uh, is the motorsports manager that say with Can Am. Okay, and uh, asked if we could help out uh, the team. It's called JV Racing. Uh, that is run by uh, uh, Jody uh, Batesman. Excuse me. And uh, they have a huge effort going on. They're actually going to be their factory support for Can-Am this year. Wow. Uh, they're going to have a factory uh, 450 team. Uh, they're going to have a side-by-side, uh, a couple guys going on in that, and also a, a 4 by 4 um, uh, racer as well. So That's a lot of stuff going yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a little bit different than two wheels, uh, but we're, we're excited to see how it goes and, and, and see how the, the 
East Coast swing kind of goes. It's it's kind of our first. So this will be y'all's first endeavor onto the East Coast. Yeah, you? yeah. Mm-hmm. Hmm. I mean, well, I've been with Multiple for five years, and it, and it's since then it's been our first endeavor. There might have been some historical stuff, right? That I don't yeah, know about but <laughs> that's okay. Yeah, no, it's, as, as I unfortunately tell a lot of people, uh, I don't have the best memory ever. It's just it's just what it is, you know. Exactly. And so yeah, I know when you kind of when you get back into the to, to the longer years, I'll remember guys like Yuha Solomon coming over. You know, to the GNCC and racing bikes, and then David Knight coming over. Mm-hmm. Both of those guys winning two years in a row. That kind of stuff, I remember. Yeah. It's unfortunately the smaller stuff where it's just kind of like, you know what, Brian, you need notes for this yeah, kind of stuff. Exactly. So that's the well, way. Uh, uh, when the U.S. rider just uh, won, right? The two wheel this past year. This right? past year, no, yeah. it was actually uh, for or two years ago. Yeah, two years ago it was uh, Charlie Mullins. Yeah, that's so right. yeah. born and bred pretty much in the GNCC series. So, so. how much I know? Is that yeah, no, that's all right. That's all right. That's all right. No worries. It's uh, it, it was cool because I actually got to be there for that. Uh, I was at Loretta Lens the past two years, so it was neat to 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 have always you know really looked up to these guys and uh, have never been there to actually see these championships cramped and i actually got to see that sure and uh you know these guys come across the finish line and 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 do it was absolutely amazing it's so cool and you know paul wibley as well you know there was a chance that mullins could have come in um but I, you know i mean uh it just wasn't gonna happen so yeah. you know and then so paul Wibley getting that win this past year and then of course we were talking a little bit about fly racing so we got to see uh jason thomas get his XE2 win. You know, Stuart Baylor was going to try to try to beat him, but unfortunately, what we comes to find out, his navicular bone was broken, broken collarbone, all kinds of crazy stuff. It looks like somebody's holding a finger up in the air. I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> Steven, what does that finger mean? What, not the middle one. What's the what's the pointer finger mean? I'm I'm holding Jeremy up here. We've got him on video chat trying to join the other chat. We're watching him right now. Uh oh. Somebody's watching it right we, now. It we, sounds horrible. We can hear people. Hey. <laughs> hey, Jeremy. I don't know, Steven. Are you still supposed to be holding him up or not? <laughs> We're just going with it? Hey, just tell Zach we'll call him back, and we'll take Jeremy for a little bit, and then we'll get Zach back on and talk about some more GNCC stuff. Right? I'm here. Yeah. This is Jeremy. I'm still here. <laughs> I, I can't. I can't see his amazing outfit. He was supposed to have a great outfit on for me, but Stephen is just not letting that happen right now. That's really unfortunate. Is it? Oh man! <laughs> hey, he's thirsty. Come on, Stephen. Your your head's really big. Taylor Media, dude. What are you talking about? This is like an advertisement for yourself. Yeah. You have a cloud. You have a brain cloud. Right. You're like, hey, what am I thinking about? I'm thinking about myself because I'm egotistical and I drink beer and I'm awesome. I am awesome. I mean, I didn't say you weren't awesome, but come on. <laughs> Steven, you got to switch this so people can see this crap. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I mean, it's, I'm not going to lie. Steve is doing a phenomenal job of running the show, but at the same time, he's sucking. <laughs> so we're trying. <laughs> we're getting a big F you. I was unfortunate. So, Jeremy. Yeah. We we have had some bandwidth issues, so if for some reason I am like, holy shit, we're having more bandwidth issues, that just means that your video is kicking the fuck out of my AT&T shitty service. So I just want to preface that it's not my fault, but it is my fault. 10-4. 10-4. AT&T would appreciate that. <laughs> we'll call them tomorrow and tell them about their <laughs> system. You're going to talk to somebody in the Philippines? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to talk to your manager. Manager does not speak English. You're like, <laughs> fuck. Uh, okay, so the reason why we have this fantastically gorgeous man from Taylor Media on the on the show is he is the producer for the GNCC webcast. So him and I actually got together last year when they were trying to do some of that stuff, and we we, we hung out at Loretta Lynn's. We got to meet, we got to hang out, and do that webcast. He had uh, helped out with some other ones as well before, but he is going to be, I think, bringing what sounds like a phenomenal, like huge front of awesomeness to the internet for 2013 with the GCC series. So please give us your rundown, give us your recap, give us your, your knowledge on what you guys are going to be doing for this year. Well, ever since the Loretta's GNCC wrapped up back in November, we've been pretty much nonstop on this webcast stuff for this year. And um, we've been scouring literally the entire world, figuring out how to bring the best technologies 
over to the GNCC series to make not only a webcast happen, but a webcast happen in HD and be able to bring live footage back from the woods to a central production area uh, where we'll be able to broadcast out. So we literally have a guy coming over from England with this antenna system that we'll be able to run cameras through the woods and bring them back to wherever our production trailer is going to be uh, around the finish line. And then uh, we've got Rodney Tomlin, who's been the voice of the GNCCs for a number of years now. He's going to be the play-by-play -play guy for the webcast. And we've got a few other people involved. And uh, it, it, it's been me and, and Carrie Bone from Mainstream Media. And it's, it's just been a kind of our, our winter project. And, and, and Carrie Russell and everybody at Racer Productions, they want to make the Racer TV website be a portal for all types of racing. So it'll be live GNCC, it'll be the GNCC, you know, the regular shows like they used to do and, you know, ATV motocross and they're running some California series on there right now. And just a ton of awesomeness. Boom. Racer TV. That's what everybody wants to have. Yeah. We need that set up here. Yeah. We need that set up here because this is, this is, this is, <laughs> I'm not going to lie. If somebody sneezes funny, this shit's going to go offline. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have uh, we have this satellite dish that's coming from um, a company called Totocast, and uh, it's it's like a it's uh, the same satellite dish that a lot of news agencies are using, and we're going to be shooting it up on K band. If anybody's been around long enough to remember the old huge satellite dishes you <laughs> used to get at your house, yes, yeah. Well, now where people are using that stuff for doing the internet broadcasts and and microwave stuff back for news agencies, and so. We're going to have internet service and we're going to be streaming the video over this K band connection uh, back to Totocast's uh, server farm and, uh, and getting these webcasts online. Man, that's so awesome. And so uh, it's, it's unfortunate because I realized when you said that Roddy Tomlin was going to be the one doing the play by play, that that actually that officially means I'm not going to be doing it, right? Well, I mean, you're not down here in the Florida compound. With me, right? <laughs> uh, so seen... no, dumbass, no. <laughs> I had to come down just like all the riders do and get a little preseason training in. So um, today, instead of drinking beer in my house in Pittsburgh, I drank beer outside by the pool in Florida to get ready for the season. I'm not going to lie. You got away from the snow in a very, very fashionable way. Uh, yeah, actually, we were getting a snowstorm up there today, so I'm, I'm glad. We left Sunday morning and uh, did a little road trip, my wife and I, and stopped in South Carolina and rode our bikes a couple places, and, and we got down here last night, and uh, yeah, pretty happy with that decision. Yeah, it's it seems like, yeah, no, it sounds like you guys are going to have way too much fun down there, so you guys going to be able to go to like Daytona, Supercross, and all that fun stuff? Uh, you know, we're going to try to go to, to the Supercross. Uh, Saturday for the GNCCs is the practice day for the quads. So uh, we're going to get down there on Thursday to start setting up. So hopefully by Saturday afternoon, we'll have a pretty good grasp on everything. And maybe we can scoot out real quick and go to Daytona Supercross uh, before our first live show on Sunday. Cool. Okay, so first live show on Sunday. So... We we're just talking to Garrett. Garrett is actually a marketing manager at Motul USA, and they are going to be—they are a big sponsor of the JB Racing team right. that is going to be uh, on. Uh, so racing on that Sunday, practicing on that Saturday. So make sure you take plenty of video yeah, of them so for me, please. He's not going to be <laughs> there at the GNCCs, but if he were to want to watch said team on the internet, where would he go to watch said webcast of his team? Uh, everything's going to be on racertv.com. Um, we purchased racertv.com last in the fall. For and, uh, one million on dollars. I beat the shit out of a 12 year old. I, I'm not even going to tell you what I did to his mom. And then I had to pay off his dad. It was just a bad situation. It was either pay off my student loans or buy racertv.com, and we went racertv. Yeah, it's unfortunately, let's just put it this way. I still have student loans. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it'll be racertv.com, and um, there'll be a link there to go to the live webcast. And you can either just watch it and do nothing else and just enjoy, or there'll be an option to sign in, and you'll be able to chat with us, and there'll be some social media things and some contests happening. And then um, the live timing and scoring will also be built into the player. So 
You'll literally be able to just watch everything in one spot. Bullshit. Hey. Man. Taylor Media. I don't fuck around. You see this by my <laughs> head? <laughs> yeah, we don't do nothing half ass. <laughs> That's right. He's like, I am so drunk right now because I couldn't even stop drinking the six pack. I had to get a twelve pack. Well, you know what? You were so late getting me on. Well, I mean, I'm not gonna lie that there's some unfortunate truth to that. <laughs> you have to pee as bad as I did earlier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the really bad. That's the really bad thing is everybody doesn't realize is that I'm not like Steve Mathis on the Pulp of Mex, though I listen and love that show, or DMXS. We don't do commercials where I get to get up and go pee. I sit here the whole time and hold it like a real man and drink my beer and maybe hydrate with ice in it to just, you know, deal with it, okay? So that's what I'm saying. So you don't get to pee. Well, that's because remember I topped it off and we did a shot before we started the show. <laughs> I think that's how the webcast is going to go, too. I think I have to do a three-and-a-half-hour-long GNCC without leaving a trailer that's, like, five by ten. You know what that really means is you guys are going to have one of those little – either you're going to cut a hole in the bottom of the trailer <laughs> or you're going to get one of those little camp toilets. And you're going to be like, Rodney, you turn the other way. Don't look, well, Rodney. Yeah, with Rodney in there, I hope it's well-vented. <laughs> I don't think this bodes there, well for anybody's <laughs> internet signal. <laughs> I don't, this might be a West Coast thing. I don't know if you guys know, but in off-road truck racing, there's a device that... Ooh, a catheter. Yeah, yeah. It's, a, oh, it's a little different than that. It, it kind of hugs that say, and you can... Uh, Is it anything like docking? Yourself, yes. Is it anything like docking? <laughs> Where you take one male's foreskin and put it over the other? I'm just kidding. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what, you better watch out, James. Larry's getting on to you over there. So, uh, so, so, how, how are you going to fix the problem? Then, are you going to put a little portage on in there? Or? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm not going to lie. That sounds like a big deal to me. Three and a half hours of sitting there with somebody else's flatulence, possibly their feces, and definitely their urine. I mean, hey, I'm a trooper. I do. You're like we them. spent. $30,000 on all this equipment, and we forgot to put in a fucking bathroom. <laughs> I'm going to send an email about that right yeah. now. John, we have a problem. <laughs> this is critical. That's going to have like a little exclamation point. Besides. Would, would, would you please CC me on that said email? Because I want to read it. <laughs> and I want to frame it because it'll be my fault that you sent it. The good thing is, is you can't lose your job because you're the only one who would know how to do this. Yeah, I've, I've spent quite a bit of time learning, uh, learning the, the switcher and learning all this internet stuff and satellite dishes and uplinks and, and just mind-blowing stuff. That uh, uh, I'm really excited to get started on this and uh, see what we can do with it. I like to call it job security. Yeah, there's definitely a little bit of job security. <laughs> Where am I going? Nowhere. Yeah, I'm the only one that knows the uh, password to turn it on. So. <laughs> uh, if I had to guess, it would be TaylorMedia.com. <laughs> not, you not have to figure out which of the letters I like substituted with like weird like a dollar sign or like a zero or like an at symbol. I'm just gonna do uppercase Taylor and then lowercase media and did hit enter. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see how that goes, right? I don't know. Oh, I gotta fix that real quick. Hold That's okay. Yeah, it's like, doo, 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 doo. but okay. So, what's your last words? Tell us, tell us a little. You know, give us, give us your last scoop on all this kinds of stuff. You know, are you excited? You're not excited? Are you peed your pants? Or what's? I mean, what's the deal? How do people get excited? Uh, Come on, bring it. I'm not expecting it to be perfect right out the bat, but uh, uh, you know, the two two rounds back to back, we'll do four shows in a matter of a week. Right. Um, We'll, a lot, we'll lot of trial and error, a lot of learn. <laughs> we'll get we'll, we'll get a lot of the kinks worked out of it. And um, but uh, GNCC is going to be really exciting this year with Amsoil uh, coming on as the title sponsor, and then Can Am sticking around as the OEM sponsor. And then um, we've got Rocky Mountain ATV MC; they're the uh, TV sponsor this year. And um, so we have some great partners in this, and we've got a lot of great people. And and uh, we've been working hard at Sailor Media, and we've been working hard at Racer TV to to really make this something that's going to be great for the fans and great for the future of GNCC. 
Um, as we start to move away a little bit from having stuff on network TV, uh, there's still going to be 13 GNCC shows on the NBC Sports Network this year, but uh, you know, the main focus this year is going to be on the webcast, and, and we're going to work really hard to make it great. Awesome. So we're excited. It's going to well, be awesome. Now, I think it's going to be awesome, dude. I really am excited. Uh, I, I hope that not only just to hang out with you again and possibly sneak into your trailer and take a crap just to piss you off, um, <laughs> I would really, uh, I'd really like to hang out with you again because you are a very, uh, very passionate beer drinking buddy. And uh, well, I don't know if you remember or not, but I did see you at Dallas Supercross. Well, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> I I do remember because I have a picture and I I didn't remember I didn't remember Saturday night but I remembered Sunday morning when I looked through my pictures and you actually reverse pickpocketed me I got back to the hotel that night and I had a seat time koozie and two stickers <laughs> you're lucky I didn't put my hand other places because not only would I just had a good time I would have I would have hey, taken all of your shit like you would have had no idea what happened you're like. Oh my God! That masked ninja man with the cowboy hat on! What the hell? I just would have given you my radio, and I could have sat up in the stands and drank beer, and you could have went down and cleaned up. Mm. <laughs> well, if you would have been taking my place, you'd have been having whiskey. <laughs> oh well, even better. <laughs> You're like, let's step it up a notch. I'm not gonna lie. Everything I drank, I as well kept in uh, in my waist that evening because <laughs> Jerry Jones could take a lot from me, but he's not taking all my money just so I can have one drink. So. Yeah, uh, that place was nuts. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty crazy. All right, well, dude, we thank you very much for coming on. Uh, this has been fantastic. You're always a fun dude. I look forward to uh, seeing you in person again. Obviously, we could do this anytime because it's the internet. And on the internet, we do whatever the hell we want. Hell of a thing, that internet. Yeah, guys, have me on anytime. I'll be glad to talk GNCC. I love it. Yeah, we're going to have a lot of GNCC talking, so we're going to do it. All right, you take it easy. We're going to get Zach Huberty back on the line so we can talk about some more of the GNCC pre-show stuff. Sailor, peace. Have fun down there in Florida, buddy. SailorMedia.com. See ya. Boom. He's just Boom. throwing it in there. I like the way he does that. He's like, ah, <laughs> screw you guys. All right, Steven, you're going to set us all up with all this stuff? Maybe. He's like, ah, oh, whatever. I'll push some buttons. Okay. So, <laughs> again, we've, we've had Garrett. Garrett. Garrett's been a little quiet. I'm not going to lie. I, uh, I'm kind of a mellow person. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Even man. with a little couple drinks that you, you specified. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, crazy Elsinore, Southern. Where's that? <laughs> These crazy SoCal people. All right, so he he mentioned he mentioned somebody that they were going to have as a title sponsor for GNCC, but that's okay. We've got yeah, you exactly. well, I'll with just, us. I'll just keep shaking my head. Yeah, because of his comments. We, we've got you with us from Multool USA. So excited to have that for sure. So if if there's any kind of social media type stuff, or if there's any websites or anything that people can learn more about Multiple USA, or maybe more about the team that you know that you guys are sponsoring, JB Racing for GNCC, please give us all that kinds of information so that we can uh, have that going forward. Uh, you can definitely check out uh, Multiple.com or uh, Facebook.com forward slash Multiple USA. Um, actually, I'm sorry, Multiple NA now. I just changed that uh, for Multiple North America because we do handle Canada as well. North, uh, it's Multiple Not American. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about those Canucks up there, you know? Yeah, uh, Canadia, uh, eh? <laughs> hey, we love those guys up there. They take care of us. But, uh, yeah. They buy the products, eh? <laughs> but, yeah, just the website and, and Facebook for now is our social media all stuff right. uh, here in the U.S. You're going to tweet uh, us later. That's about all we can handle. No, yeah, no, no Twitter no, for no, now. No, yeah, no tweets, no birds, you know, none of that kind of stuff. So uh, Keeps it know, in the family. I'm only one man, let's say. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not going to lie. It definitely sucks being the, I mean, not that seat time's, you know, the biggest thing ever, but fuck, you're like, ah! <laughs> Like shit all over the place. Instagram, you know, like, God I'm picture damn. Them, I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna talk about myself. Yeah, it's you know, true. You're like, I'm gonna Instagram a picture. I'm gonna tweet on the Twitter, and then I'm gonna Facebook real hard on Facebook, and then you're gonna update the website, and then you're... exactly. I, I prefer the <sighs> website. Just take a take naked picture, and put it on. And you can dump yeah. it on Facebook, and you're done. Just take yeah. a naked picture of yourself as a selfie, put it on Tumblr. Somebody else will post it on their shit for you. And you're like done. You don't have anything to do anything and else. And then threaten they're going to send it to other people, and uh, you know. Yeah, it's like I mean, mom and dad something. already know I'm fucked up. So. Oh, wasn't, wasn't, wasn't posted, it's out there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you you may try to delete it, but it's on my computer. <laughs> so. <laughs> I was told there's a new uh, a new site for uh, let's say the ladies to take care of their 
other halves. Well, this might be where, a moto show, but shit, what's it? Yeah, what do we got? I mean, I know I'm getting off subject here. I'm sorry. Please but, continue uh, to get off subject. I, I have a feeling there's a lot of guys out there. I, I can't tell you the name now, but I supposedly is it pitcher, that dirty? Yeah, a pitcher will last for ten seconds and then it's wiped out. Snapchat. Yeah, it's it's done. No, I'll tell you the name. Sna- not that I've used it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I follow myself. Snapchat, there we go. <laughs> yeah. I, I take pictures and I set under myself, and I'm like, hey, oh. I get, I get really let down. I'm like, why is it always guys? And I'm like, oh, right, it's always just me. It's pretty pathetic, but. Snapchat, there we go. Yeah, you, 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 do, you do what you need to do to get by on your Tuesday afternoons, right? <laughs> All right, so Zach, we've got you back. I want to know your thoughts going into the 2013 GNCC series. Ooh. Just bring it, man. Just bring the pain. Just, just like however you feel about it. Predictions, thoughts, opinions, whatever. Uh, I think Josh Strang's gonna steal the show. You think? Oh, I love it. I love it. Fuck yes. Bring that shit. I love it. I'm in. Talk more. I mean, I was just looking at the Mid East results today, and uh, I mean, he wasn't. But I think at, at most, I think it was two minutes off of. Paul Wibley for the race, and he actually had the fastest lap of the race compared to Paul Wibley. Um, so I think really him getting acclimated to the East Coast isn't hard, and then you know his time off from being in the West Coast really hasn't hurt him. I mean, I think he's going to be a big threat. Yeah, I. On that note, I think he wants it more than anybody else out there. Like I, I, I think like. You know, after his win in uh, 2010 and kind of the whole Suzuki thing falling apart, you know, with he didn't even he found out from other people finding out that he lost his job, like you know, with with Suzuki, and having to kind of like go not, not that he had to, but he kind of, he did have to go find a team. He needed to make money, so he went to the West Coast. Now that he's coming back, I think he is probably the hungriest son of a bitch out there. That is that is the perfect person to start off with. So good job. Next. Do you want a fantasy GNCC? Oh, Ed, is Digital Off Road still doing their fantasy GNCC stuff? I, I don't know. I remember that that they did it a couple of years ago, but um, I I certainly haven't heard any. Yeah, I haven't it. either. That's a good question. We could have to look into that because I know that uh, Hoop from DigitalOffRoad.com actually used to run. Uh, like the fantasy off road or whatever, I don't remember what it's called, but yeah, I always got involved. It was like ten bucks to sign up. You had a chance to win a little mini bike or whatever, like a one ten or whatnot. But it's always cool. We'll look into it. Yeah, that'd be yeah. good because he's definitely a good pick, I think. All right, so what else you got, Zach? What as far as like second, third? No, I um, mean like other thoughts, other thoughts. I mean, I could, I could tell you that. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right that Josh String is, <laughs> is the hungriest son of a bitch out there. Um, you know, but I mean, it, so I don't think he's the hungriest. No, you th- or do you think Caleb Russell's the hungriest? I I think it's probably Caleb right now. You I think? mean, I think he wants it more than anybody. I don't know. Uh, I think I think I yeah, I mean that's it I That's okay. We can agree to disagree because that's always fun. I think that Josh Strang's the hungriest son of a bitch out there, but I think that Caleb Russell is probably the hungriest one that's been on the East Coast that cuz he just like lost. Like he like if it hadn't been for Florida, he really would have had the championship. I mean, granted, there's always oh, yeah. it's racing, but still. Um, I mean, I would say Caleb is the hungriest, but Josh Strang has the most to prove, I guess. I mean, he was on the West Coast for a year, kind of, you know, didn't really get into the GNC scene except for doing that one race where I think he got, he was sixth, I think. Yeah. Um, We'd have to ask but, Jason Hooper because that guy's got the memory of a fucking, like, awesome memory person. I believe it was six. I, I know that uh, Strang was definitely disappointed with that race. He said that, uh, you know, he's been off it so long and coming back, you know, he's really going to have to put in a lot of work in the off season just to get back up to that top level. But I definitely think he's there. Right. Well, cool. All right. Okay. So do you think Paul Wibley then is this going to – do you think Paul Wibley's not going to be able to defend his title or do you think he's going to put in some good races or – what? I mean, he'll put up a fight. He's, he's gonna probably f- one of the people in the trees is what he's gonna do. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. No, it's Paul Wibley. He will put people in the trees. He will, he will not be talked about and possibly cut the course. But uh, he will. I'm just saying, it's Paul Wibley. We all know it happens. Uh, so. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, <I> <laughs> yeah. Zach, Zach's like, I don't ever cut the course. 
I don't know what you're talking about. Why would I want to do that? All right, so we've no, talked about I three feel guys. Bad if I do. You feel bad if you cut the course? Oh yeah, I mean, even like at the National Endurance this weekend, there are some fields where you know, yeah, I mean, you're supposed to go around it, but I mean, sometimes when you just go straight through the middle, you almost feel bad because you're like, yeah, I just cut off ten seconds off everybody else who followed the arrows. <laughs> well, I think like uh, I, it's an interesting point because I've talked to a lot of people. They're like, you're in an enduro; it's arrow to arrow. Like technically, you're not trail racing. Isn't you. That's yeah. I'd tell you what it's called in Texas, but people would just get pissed off at me. It's not what I call them, but it's what other people call them. Do it. Um, it's not a pro line. No, I'm not doing it. Not you, Larry. Him. Uh, so uh, it, uh, technically, in an enduro, it's it's arrow to arrow. It, it's not trail racing. You know what I mean? So if if you're if the if the next arrow is you know. The next arrow that they put is across a field, and there are really no arrows that would essentially make this turn. Yeah. No, straight line. Straight line to the next arrow, straight buddy. Line, you know and I know. Make it happen. How do you think you get but, a 23A? But then again, um, I mean, there's some races where you think you're making a cut. Oh, yeah, no, no. You're, you're, it, yeah, you're absolutely you correct. You going the wrong way on the course, or you missed an important turn, and um, I'd rather be safe and follow the arrows, you know, the way they were put up. <laughs> yeah, and you never know, too. In this situation, sometimes you could wind up taking half a mile off, and then you get DQ'd because of the fact they know. You're like, your shit was two minutes faster than somebody else's. So yeah. all that kinds of stuff. All right, so we're talking about GNCC. Gary, do you have yeah. any opinion about some of these riders? And it's okay if you don't, but you can tell me whatever you want. I'll be honest with you. I know all the names, um, but I can't throw an opinion because I don't know much about it. Uh, I have followed a little bit of the Enduro Series um, because of, some support that we've given to, uh, I don't know if you guys know Jesse Grom, I believe. Yeah, you absolutely, yeah. Name? Yeah, um, you know, he did quite well last year as a privateer type yep. racer. So. And now he's on the, uh, uh, the the Ampro team, the Yamaha Ampro team. Yeah, yeah, so I'm glad he got picked up by that and, and glad that we could help him out last year. Uh, but GNCC, I'm just in the dark, let's say, except for the ATV team. That, uh, All right, that we so Zach. <laughs> Not only are we going to educate other people about there about our opinions and what could possibly go on in the GNCC, but we are now educating Garrett. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> no, I'm stuck in the West Coast, so you got to help me out. We got, we're bringing the knowledge. <laughs> All right. So Thad Duvall, who did get a win last year on his 450, you know, Shenandoah USWE Honda, I was well, off-road yep. champions last year. Now it's you know Shenandoah USWE or Usway if you're Sweden Swedish. But uh, what do you think about that? That that's a mean dude. I mean. I think he definitely has the speed to run up front. Um, in the past, his problem has always been consistency, whether it's, you know, I guess mechanical or getting injured in that kind of instance. Um, but he's definitely matured over, I mean, last year he showed a lot of maturity and how he raced, how he's consistent every weekend and how he kind of did settle for the fourth and fifth sometimes instead of getting, you know, knocked out of the race when going for the first, you know, going for the win. Um, I think he's going to be a top three guy this year. And even at the National Enduros, he's turned some heads, especially last weekend with the different section times and just how smooth he's gotten. Yeah. No, I, I think you, you've made a valid, valid point in that, you know, when he kind of came off the Yamahas, he, he did. He had this, like, super, super inconsistent, you know, and that's kind of why they didn't want to renew a contract. He had to find a way to essentially make a ride, and he was able to, to then have that ride. And, and But I think... He was like, "Holy shit! I have to, I have to get it together. I have to find a way to continue to make a living at this." And he he got smart about it. And I wonder if that kind of that quick education that he had over that off season is going to bring in something new for this year. Like he he's had all this time now to really soak it in and be like, "All right, I got the consistency thing down." And now he's going to be able to push it a little bit more and and, and have a feel for. What is crazy conservative and what is, you know, ultra competitive? Um, oh, it's yeah. it's and, interesting and that I, you say he's top three. I, 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 I don't know if I'd have said that, honestly, but now that you say it, that's smart. I like that. I mean, I, I don't know for sure, but I want to see it because I want to see I these mean, guys fight. You know what I'm saying? Like, there, There's a lot of guys on any given weekend who could be top three, which is it's, it's a hard thing to say. At the end of the year, I think that Duvall is going to be first, second, third. I mean – it's a tough statement when we haven't even gotten to the first race. Well, that's what I guess that's what uh, trying to go through all this kind of stuff and just it, we're we're you know how did all these how have all these guys done in the past? 
You know, we all know that these guys, they train their butts off now. Just like, excuse me, just like a bunch of the Supercross and Motocross guys. It's like, all right, there is no real off season. There's a non-race season. Um, and I think that we're going to really, you know, obviously coming into Florida, Charlie Mullins is on it. Paul Wibley's on it. Josh Strang's on it. You know, we're seeing all these guys race um, now, you know, and they're not racing in the shape. They're there. They may not yep. be a hundred percent GNCC shape. I mean, they race for three hours. That's insane. Um, but I think we're gonna we're gonna find it out. And then River Ranch is such an ass beating. It's just, I mean, the <laughs> sand, 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 sand. I mean, if you're not wearing chamois butter, you're an idiot. <laughs> because what is chamois butter? <laughs> it's the stuff that you dip your balls in with a six pack, and it makes you feel. No, it's a. Uh, you know, if you're if you're not into using Vaseline, it's stuff that you would uh, put into your areas that get sweaty between your legs. Shit. <laughs> well, you're trying to say that baby powder isn't good enough. Yeah, baby powder. Oh, baby powder's not good. I get way too wet for baby powder. <laughs> you need antiperspirant yeah. or <laughs> the other side yeah. of your body. <laughs> That's why I like shaving butter because it's already moist. You know what I mean? <laughs> Right, Zach. What about you, Zach? What do you put between your legs? <laughs> I I could never use any of that, you know, different um, the gels out there. I mean, I can't Im I can't imagine riding on it. You'd just be like sliding around. So you're what you're saying is your boxer shorts and all natural. Yeah, I mean boxer shorts and my fly racing pants, and that's it's good enough yeah. for me. Boxer shorts. What is? Yeah. Oh my no, gosh. There's no. No. Well, that's fine. That's fine. But box. I, really? I mean, like, I'm. I recently got some. Uh, some like, nice bicycle compression shorts to try start using. Yeah. Um, they have like a little padding in them, but I can't get used to it. It it just seems too odd to be, to have like padding in your actual compression shorts. I I don't know. It's it's not something that I like, especially with sitting on the bike. <laughs> hey! Yeah, that's true. Uh, I I I personally uh, I think the tighter the better when it comes to uh, placing on those those fun little shorts. But uh, you know that's just me. So what about you? Do you have a do you have a do you have a preference? Uh, for me, I wear uh, I wear knee braces. So I just decided <laughs> to go with the full the full you know, kit. Yeah, like not, the whole no, like no no knee sleeves and sh you know underwear or whatever. Or, uh, I did the whole uh, the sleeves. I actually bought them from uh, I think EVS. So little, so it's like a full short stuff. like to yeah shorts to legs. You just slap your knee braces on. They don't slide down. You don't pinch your thighs. They're awesome. You so, still got monkey butt though. You can't. Lie. Yeah yeah. I mean well I'm a motocross guy so I'm not on the bike as long as you guys are but. It's like thirty minute motos. Uh, yeah, I, I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I could I could sense some need for uh, some uh, some moisture down there. Yeah, once it once it once it gets into about thirty two minutes for him, he's like, whoa, oh. it's either time for a water or I gotta slow it down. This shit's getting serious. <laughs> okay, well, uh, any any XC two, any XC two thoughts? Um, I mean. I, I've kind of grown up in, you know, in the series with Andrew DeLong. Um, he's always been kind of someone to look up to in the in the East Coast Endurance Association. So, I mean, he's my favorite right now. Nice. And, well, you know, I, I think he's I, a I good favorite for sure. I wouldn't be surprised to see him in the top three this year. Top three? Really? You really think he'd be top three? I mean, three? overall, you know? overall, I, in some races. Oh, I, I see what you're saying. Oh, you think that he could actually do top three from the XC2 line? Yeah, in some races, depending on you know if he's really on it that day. Yeah, for sure. I mean, like it, it's in, yeah. I mean, you know, we've seen Stuart Baylor Jr. almost do that. Jason Thomas was doing a really good job of getting up into there. I think Andrew DeLong even a couple times did work his way into the top three. Um, obviously, none of those guys ever actually finished in the overall overall position. Um, but man, yeah, that's yeah. A really I mean, good there's point. a couple of times where I think Andrew did finish third overall in a race. Yeah, um, no, no, no you're ACC. right. Yeah, for sure. Um, and there were actually points where him and Stewart were overalling the whole thing from the second row, but that usually doesn't seem to last the whole race. Um, I guess the XC2 mentality is a lot more aggressive early on, whereas the XC1, you know, they kind of ease into it and then really just hammer down. Right. Huh. 
Hmm. All right, what about Jason Thomas, though? Jason Thomas, XC2 winner last year in his fly racing gear at the time. Unfortunately, he's he's moved on. But, hey, man, he's got a team for doing the XC1 class this year. So what do you think? I mean, he's definitely a championship threat. And, um, I mean, we'll see. I, it really depends. I don't know how acclimated he is yet to that uh, that 250F that he's riding. Yeah, and he didn't move. Yeah, he didn't move to the. Uh, he didn't move to the XC1 class. I'm sorry. I was thinking of Stewart Baylor Jr. when we move into the XC1 class, but he's he's so hurt. Unfortunately, I just I just I, I think this year's done for him. I think with his second surgery already this year that he is just he, he will not be able to defend any of his titles or his, his you know his enduro title and then his XC2 from the year before. So it's kind of unfortunate, but. I don't know. So then we got a couple guys. I think like Chris Douglas is moving up from the uh, from the A class into the XC2 yep. class. We got Plessinger moving up officially. You know they did a couple yeah, races Grant last Baylor. year and stuff. Yeah, Grant Baylor, who's been kicking ass at the Enduros. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. You know, a lot of people have mentioned. You know, Stewart Baylor Jr. was so fast, but they're like, dude, look at his younger brother. And it's you, you, you know you're kind of like, all right, cool, yeah, he's in the family, they're fast, but then like he's still not. Well, he's like 16 now. Maybe he's late he's, 15? Uh, 15. Yeah. Actually. Like late 15s. And he's freaking top 10 in it at the national Enduros. Yeah. He um, was eighth at uh Cherokee and then sixth this past weekend and was uh fourth in the last test. Yeah. I mean, that's fourth. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Like that's ridiculous. So yeah, there's some talent out there, dude. It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. I'm looking forward to this, especially with the fact we just got off. And I, I'm sorry you weren't able to stay on. We had the stupid issues and stuff, but I mean, we just got <laughs> done talking with uh, Jeremy and everything, and it sounds like we, you, know, you go to racertv.com, and we're going to be able to get a chance to get a lot of information right there as it's happening, a lot of HD uh, video footage. You know, there's uh, Rodney Tomlin's going to be um, – commenting as everything's going on we're going to be able to check out all the live previews i think that's awesome um i did have a chance to to help them out last year with a couple webcasts phenomenal i thought it was so much fun uh, i would only hope to get involved again at some point we'll see i don't know but uh you're going to be able to watch some of that or are you going to go to the end of races any of the gnccs i mean i hope to watch you know every single one you know if i'm not doing indoor that day um I'd also like to get to some GNCCs. I haven't been since I think I was on an 85 at the time. Oh, <laughs> man, back in the uh, day. Actually, what, yeah. that was, what, two years ago for you? Oh, no, that was about uh, four, four or five, maybe a little longer. Yeah, it was forever ago. Um, which, it's changed a lot since then. I think when I when I had gone to the Unadilla race, David Knight, I think, overall that day. I don't remember correctly. It's like they're, well, I guess either 07 or 08 then, huh? Yeah, so that's got to have been four or five years ago. Like yeah. That. yeah. He's um, like, I'm not a mathematician, <laughs> but <laughs> Garrett, Garrett, Garrett's figuring shit out over here for us. Don't worry. He's our numbers guy. Yeah, he's our numbers guy. <laughs> um, but, I mean, I would love to get to some this, this year. Um, it's just kind of hard with 18 Enduros and then doing some NEPG and hair scrambles and all the other commitments out there, so... <laughs> Yeah. We'll see. All right. Uh, Steven, can you hand me my phone really quick? All right. Um, I'm going to see what happens. Oh, my God. Oh, my wife is talking about having her first sale on Etsy. Mm. Uh, woo. So, Brian Elliott from Alliance Off Road would like to give away one of their t shirts. Um, the all heart t-shirt. So I want to ask you if there is any form of trivia question, your age, whatever you want to, I'm, I'm leaving it up to you. Whatever you want people to guess, we'll ask them to, to tweet us on Twitter at seat time underscore CO with the answer to your question. So Ooh. if you could, um, um, I mean, it, I don't even need to know the answer, to be honest. As long as you know the answer, we're going to be good. So what do you think? Well, in the spirit of talking about National Enduros, All right. um, let's see. Let's have them name the, the top three from this past weekend. Okay. I like it. I, Nothing we're... too difficult, but you know, something to keep them on their toes. Right? I like that. Let's do it. Let's see what happens. I'm going to send out a tweet, too, to see as well what's going on. Top three this past weekend. 
And they can always check offroadviking.com for the for the answer. <laughs> what a dick. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, check out for a second. Hey, uh, you were trying to get me to leave them earlier to go to Texas. So that was I had to get to such a joke. I mean, not that I don't want you to come to Texas. You should come to Texas regardless. <laughs> Zach, riding's good here. I'm telling you. <laughs> I would love to come out. It'd be a blast. It's Apparently, people are trying to people specifically mark Twa- mark car coach coach we're gonna find out right now mark a lot of people think your last name is cock is it cock or is it coach all right i know you're watching let us know. so let us know because we're tired of fucking behind your back figuring out how to pronounce your last name so damn it i thought it was cock <laughs> james was just hoping it was cock okay <laughs> so and he's trying to claim that he already won the t-shirt. I don't really know if he did, if that's fair or not, to be honest, Zach. So we'll see. We'll see. All right. <laughs> Top three this past weekend. We've already talked about it and already named the names. You don't have to go to any other site to figure it out. Okay. Tell them that Mark Wake told me it was cock. Ask Zach how he feels about it. Wow, he said it's cook. How would you pr- why would you pronounce K O C H as cook? That's Zach how he feels about a guy named Cock winning this prize. Yeah. A guy a, <laughs> The guy with the last name of Cook that looks like Cock just won your shirt. Are you old enough to listen to this kind of stuff? Are you old enough to listen? <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> well no, you're you're how old are you? 21. 21? Oh, that's... Oh, man. I'm oh, sorry, buddy. Yeah. Hey. I'm, I'm legal. I'm the legal drinking age. Yeah, keep, keep those <laughs> jeans, wait, wait, keep those jeans rocking, buddy. You look good. Yeah. He just said four or five. Four or five, so I would go with five. Five years ago, Zach? 80s? You're off 80s five years ago? 2008? Yeah, I think I was uh, 16 at the time. 16? I was six years into I, Texas. I, I think that was the last... I think 16 was the last... Uh, year they allowed us for youth because you, they started your birthday at the beginning of the year so maybe i started out 15 yeah. ended the year 16 yeah. look at you guys what why would you why would you <laughs> test him <laughs> why are you questioning it? look at that face he's so cute with his little 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 nick on his nose from the riding and during the woods <laughs> yeah no he's from the northeast he's from ma, ma- west what West what? Westchester. West oh, Pennsylvania. I would have been right. <laughs> huh? Oh, yeah. Do you know Bam Bam? Oh, I mean, I don't know him personally, but yes, he does live here. So if you like, well, can you like meet him personally and hook us up? <laughs> no, I, with all his pranks, I wouldn't dare to. Yeah, he's like, hey, hey all, what's you, this? all you got to do is bring a hose or whatever, or a snake, you know. He's terrified of those oh. things. <laughs> he cries like a little girl over there. Exactly. That. There you go. See? See? That's your defense. That and huge triples that he's going to case because at this point he's had his nose broken like two or three times. So yeah. don't do any of that shit. All right. I just wanted to see if anybody would say anything. That's, That's a, kind of fun. An awkward time. Yeah, it happens. All right, so some of the people that make this kind of stuff happen, we have to say thank you very much to our other sponsors of Seed Time. So Seed Time is brought to you as well in part of uh, Power Sport Graphics. So thank you. You can go check them out at ridepg.com. Um, they're, they're running some really good deals right now. So one of the cool things is you can go to their website, and you're like, oh, my gosh, that looks so amazing. I want that kit for my, for my motorcycle. Go there, click on it, hit the ready-to-ship option. You buy it as is. Now, you don't get to add anything custom, but that's okay because you save 40% off the retail price. I think that that is a really, really good deal. And so as well, if you go and you order before 11 a.m. Eastern time, which is you know semi-early if you're, on, uh, if you're, if you're anywhere else, but that's okay. Uh, uh, did I get Eastern right? <laughs> I just, I just want to check at this point. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so it should be 8 a.m. Pacific. See, that would be really early in Pacific time because you guys in California, you don't wake up to like 9.30. Most of 
I smoke a bowl. Differ, but. You know. Yeah, he's like, <laughs> I'm so up earlier than 9.30. It is like 9.20. We're not all surfers there, sir. Yeah, well, you should be. <laughs> Sounds horrible. You should be. So, but you can go. You could check it out. You could order it before uh, before 11 a.m. Eastern time. And you know what? Boom! Next day shipping at your door. What's up? So you saved 40%. It's at your door the next day. I think that's a pretty good deal. Or if you're just like, dude, that looks awesome. I want to order that from Ride PG. You can enter the discount code seat time and you save 10% off of everything. So, you know, anybody that wants to shop at ridepg.com, you've got quite a few different options. Sounds great. I think it sounds fantastic. So, and then, of course, Squarespace. So, squarespace.com slash seat time is the URL that you want to go to. So, Squarespace. People are like, what is Squarespace? It has nothing to do with motorcycles. Wrong. It's everything to do with motorcycles, especially when it comes to marketing yourself as an athlete. So, if you go to Squarespace, you can set up, you can purchase a domain and set up a website right there with all the software that they have included. So, they have... What is it? They have all the hosting involved, all the domain buying, and as well all the uh, content management systems. So you can go in there and do all your content writing. So if you're writing race reports, you can go do all your picture uploads, all your video uploads. If you're doing anything, you know, kind of more media related, or as well, if you're just like, oh man, I really want to support my sponsors. I'm going to put all this stuff out there where people can find it. You can do that through a website that you build through Squarespace. So I think it's a really good way to do it because. You, you get in there and you, you really start to become one with the product. You can kind of figure th- – you're not just totally stumbling through it. They make it really easy for you to go in there and make an exceptional website. You sign up, ooh, and you use the discount code SEATTIME1 because that gives you 10% off your entire purchase. So everything you buy, you go, oh, I'm going to sign up for a month, get 10% off. Sign up for a year, get 10% off for a year. So obviously, the more you buy, the more you save. But you're able to sign up, buy a domain, get in there with that, Pick some wicked ass template that makes you look really cool as shit. You can even customize it if you're in a CSS and know how the hell that works. So I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. I think people should do it. Have you have you ever have you ever built a website? I never have, but we, speaking, it's, speaking it's, it's, from it sounds someone that, horrible, doesn't it? Someone that that receives race resumes and and things like that, uh, or even race results. Uh, from what you said, that sounds great, you know, but. But definitely make sure you send it to your sponsors and, yeah. and, and that they can see that. Um, you know, we see so many racers and talk to so many that we can't keep track of all of them. So uh, the, the best you can keep and, the data. And a great. guy who had a mom and pop looking website versus a guy that has a very professional looking website, honestly, don't you think if you look at them, you would weigh well, in a totally, little bit more totally, on the more totally. professional if, if looking website? If someone sends me a professional resume, let's say. I'm, I'm going to, my eyes yeah. are going to be attracted to so, that. So definitely. The good thing is, is if you know nothing about web design or web development, you can go to squarespace.com. You can sign up. You can get a free month. To no credit card needed. You just sign up, try it out, put all your stuff in. You can even import stuff from all the other uh, blog blogging software out there. Boom. Professional looking website. Absolutely fantastic. Squarespace.com slash seat time. Please use the discount code seat time one. So that way we can get credit because they're a sponsor of seat time. And that's how we pay Steven to be as awesome as he is and make sure that shit happens so if nothing else steven will come beat you up if you don't do it thank you very much squarespace for being here we appreciate it um so again we had technical difficulties i really apologize for that but at the same time i think i, th- I think we're we're just trying to have fun you know we don't want to well, take we this hope that everyone's still watching right yeah now. and if they're not you know what hopefully they're still listening because you can find all this stuff on stitcher you can find it all on itunes if you're just into listening zach huberty though you over there, kind sir, tell us where everybody can find you on the internet so that they can be your best friend for life. Um, I mean, on Facebook, you can just find me at, uh, just search me under Zach Huberty. Um, and then as far as Twitter, at Zach Huberty 323. And then for Instagram, Zach's Racing 323. I'm not sure why I, I did different names for all three, but... Uh, I guess it keeps people on their toes. <laughs> yeah. Now, now that now that you're actually into media, you realize that consistency is key. You screwed <laughs> yeah. that up from the beginning. <laughs> You've learned your lesson, and uh, it's okay. That's all right. Yeah, we're at the same same boat. Unfortunately, I was like, oh, seat time, seat time, seat time, and I get the Twitter. No damn seat time. It's already taken. I was like, what the jerk. So, I wonder who got that. Seat time underscore co. Yeah, he doesn't use it ever, and he never got in touch with me. So it's Twitter. <laughs> but uh, speaking of Twitter. And uh, some of our social media and stuff like that. So Seat Time. You can find us at SeatTime.co. That's our URL. That's our website. So all this stuff is archived. So in case you are into watching some of these videos and finding out more about, you know, what we look like and how absolutely freaking attractive we are, SeatTime.co. Of course, that's all on YouTube as well. 
And if you are on Facebook and you want to Facebook us real hard, make sure we're having a good time. Give us some of your updates. Facebook.com slash seat time is where we're at. Now, if you're on Twitter and you want to tweet us real hard, it's seat time underscore CEO. So Twitter.com slash seat time underscore CEO. I mean, of course, we're on Instagram, seat time. That's pretty easy. So, I mean, it's, you're, it's, you're all over the place. It's a lot you of crap. Yeah. I mean, I take pictures of my dick. I put it up on the internet. <laughs> Uh, I think I think everyone just signed off at this point. Yeah, and we're done. No, but uh, so this is this has been uh, episode seventy six. I don't ever think that we actually uh, introduced this. So thank you, Larry, for being on. Thank you, Garrett, for taking his place. Thank you very much. That guy. I mean, ser- no, I'm just kidding. And then, of course, no, Mr. Zach Huberty. Uh, seriously, I have been trying to have you on the show for a long time, and I really appreciate you taking the time to come down to your parents' house and missing all the chicks and bikinis. Um, I mean, <laughs> no I'm just dis- I'm mean, disappointed for you, to be honest. Um. I've been meaning to get on the show, but honestly, the, my router up at State College is extremely slow. and it it Worse, than, worse than mine, apparently? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, some days I can't even connect to the internet, uh, so it gets pretty bad. But uh, that's, uh, I think that's Comcast up there. So Well, I blame AT&T problem. down here. <laughs> so. Oh, he goes to college and has internet, but at the same time, since he's in college, he doesn't have to have porn. So it, it makes it a little bit easier since it's probably like dial up. I understand that. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> All well, right. Actually, that made sense. Yeah, you're like, I get it. I get it. It's like every Saturday, every Friday night, he has to use the internet. Every Saturday night, he might get lucky. There's a big difference. So, no, well, hey, good luck or congratulations on your fantastic job so far at the uh, Enduros this year. Uh, we wish you the best of luck. Are you going to be in Texas at all? Like for, uh, for Concho? It's a. Uh... It's a tough thing. I, I honestly don't think I'll be there. It's not but. that tough. You fly in Friday night. I know where the airport is. I know how to get there. I can drive there because I won't have any drinks before. Uh, and then you can, <laughs> ri- you, can, you can ride with James and I to the Enduro, and then you can pay for your own taxi back because on Monday morning, my ass is going to have to go to work. Zach, so. it's the, it will be you, the you should it figure it out. Awesome. Concho, I am very, very excited for that national to yeah. be there. It is it's phenomenal, phenomenal course. You do not want to. Yeah. You 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 haven't ridden anything like this in the Northeast. It's the weirdest, shaliest, mesquite tree, rocky awesomeness that you'll ever wild hate. Yeah. yeah. Have you ever almost been run over by a buffalo? No. <laughs> Come to Concho. Ninety percent chance it's gonna happen. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I mean, unless someone were to pay my way, there's honestly almost no way to get out there. It happened for it happened for other guys. Especially being back Monday. So. (laughs) Tell them I'll talk to Bob Larry. I think Fly could. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we'll talk. We'll talk. We'll talk to our friends at Fly. That's in the room. I mean, I I would love to even come out just for like the media, just kind of you know go out and write a race report. I mean, I don't even have to race the Texas National. I enjoy it just oh, no. watching it. Yeah, if you're out there for any kind of race report, and you're race reporting on riding for sure. But Steven and I are trying to make it out there together so that we can actually do some video and in some uh, hopefully some live interviews and stuff. We've got to we've got to figure out if it's even possible. We've uh, unfortunately we keep having technical difficulties like this. We're going to shoot ourselves in the face before we actually get anywhere with some of the stuff we have in mind. But you know what? We're having fun doing it, so we're going to keep figuring it out. So hey, thank you for being on the show. Thanks everybody for being here. It's been a Freaking grand time. And the one thing you got to remember about seat time is you got to always enjoy a pint full of awesome, right? Boom, bitches. Right. Thanks for being here, Garrett. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me get the, the seat time cup here. Get the crowd. Cheers. Up. Thanks for having Boom. me. Boom. Zach, thanks for talking with you. Thanks. <laughs>